Shanghai. It's a pretty big deal. The third largest city in the world, a major centre for science and technology, the world's largest port, and today, 80% humidity. Originally a fishing village and market town, I kind of get that, but now the size of Los Angeles and New York combined. We're now heading west to Suzhou City. I'm super excited about this trip. We're here to visit one of the pioneers of e-bike systems, Bafang, who've been in the business over 20 years. This then is a company who have been going quietly about their business since 2003. Can you believe they've made over 20 million motors since that time? Obviously, a lot of those have been hub drive. But since 2008, Bafang have been making complete e-bike systems. We're here to look at the R&D, the testing, the test labs, those will be interesting, the production line, and also get to ride some of those motors in some very tasty hills. Fang employs over 1,100 people at 12 locations worldwide. The headquarters, development and production sites are located in Suzhou City in the immediate vicinity of Shanghai, China. Now in this video we're going to be looking at the research and development which takes place in this building along with the products. The huge range of motors, batteries, displays and remotes which Bafang offer. Before the next video which actually looks at the production line which is in this massive building behind me. Now, before we get into the heart of this incredible building, I want to familiarize you guys with some of the motors. I've ridden most of them, really great personalities. And as many of you guys have pointed out, super reliable. Starting off with the M820. Now this is sub two kilos, 70 newton meters. When you think about the whole chat that's going on at the moment about lightweight e-mountain bikes, this really is a great option. And like I said, 70 newton meters is a bit more power than many of the other offerings. Moving on to the M560. Wow, what a powerhouse this is. 140 newton meters. When it comes to mountain climbing, this is really, really difficult to beat. M560. Uh, and the next one, which is possibly the one which is most, most relevant to all of us, is the M510. Now, this replaces the M500. Um, it's 18% smaller than the previous version and produces 20% more power. Uh, I've already ridden this motor many times, and when it comes to climbing and technical riding, it's pretty amazing. Right, but Fang, what am I thinking? Well, performance, reliability, for so many different users. We're looking at hub drives, both front and rear, cargo drives, and more recently, they've been doing GVT, which is gear variable transmission. They do automatic shifting motors and automatic shifting gear hubs. Now, Bafang don't just make motors, they make the complete e-bike system, which comprises of many things, starting off with the battery. They have their own new energy center here in Suzhou, or a battery plant. This is a 380 watt hour. They do batteries up to 1,050 watt hours. The motors and also the HMI, the human machine interface. Contemporary, attractive, I don't know about you guys, I don't actually look at displays while I'm riding an e-mountain bike. Nevertheless, Bafang do many versions and many of them are award-winning. The one we're gonna be using mostly on this shoot is actually the 245, which is the remote, really minimalist remote, which is very easy to use. 
and the display. Now, as you can see, the display here is two versions. You've got a handlebar mounted one or one which is available on the top tube. Um, really discreet, uh, easy to use even in the sunlight and all the metrics. Wow, so much innovation. It has to have a beginning. Even this motor needs to have a source, an idea. And it all takes place in this room. This is the brains. This is the technology center of the Fang. In this room, we have all the designers, structural, hardware, software, system. This is a pretty expensive room. But remember, it's not just one motor, it's actually many motors, many batteries, displays, remotes, controllers. Now that's the big picture stuff. Remember, within one motor, take this M510 as an example. You've got the stator, the rotator, the reduction gear, the clutch, each and every bearing and nut and bolt needs to be designed by somebody. And then of course you have the software, the kind of personality of the motor. Oh, and this little beauty. We'll save that until last. Just to introduce you to some characters. We've got Lee Peng here yeah, on systems and SKU. David, who's on displays. Uh, this is Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Bruce is surrounded by motors. Uh, Bruce is on software. By the way, I'm actually using the English names here. And finally, we've got Cedric, who's actually the spirit. This is the man who designs the personality of each of those Bafang motors. And as I mentioned, this little beauty, the PCB board. Now, come with me in here. Tucked away in the technology center is this mind-blowing room. Um, here we have Olivia. Yeah. There's Olivia on the solder. And we've also got Joe, who just happens to have a picture of the Royal Crescent in Bath. I mean, this room, I've been to lots of rooms like this, but none quite like this one. So the brains, the spirit, we're now gonna take a behind the scenes look at their large scale experimental center, the lab. The Fang's laboratory is a large scale experimental center covering many thousands of square meters. It comprises of world leading test facilities, an EMC lab, acoustics lab, motor performance, electrical safety, environmental reliability, and an aging lab. Why? Well, it all leads to product stability and of course, developing and improving new products. We're now at the Fang Test Center, which is the very heart of the Fang R&D. Come on. Nice one, Tommy, let's go for it. Acoustic test room, we're looking for that. And this is where my voice goes from probably quite high pitched into something altogether different. I mean, this room is absolutely crazy. This is a semi anechoic chamber. So, an echo ick without echo. In here, they test the sound and the noise of e-bike motors and two-wheelers. This room is absolutely awesome, without echo. Now, I'm sure many of us want quiet e-mountain bike motors, and this really is the place to do all the data testing and analysis. So we've now got an M510 motor in the jig. We're running at 104 RPM cadence. Uh, this is now without load, so when I give the thumbs up, they can actually put load on the motor. So if I, if I shut up for a minute and we can just hear the sound of this motor. It's like really quiet. So let's see what the difference makes when we uh, stick a big load on it. Thumbs up, here we come. Now that motor is you can see the cadence has gone down. It's probably got my weight in it, 95 kilos, but the sound levels aren't really that much different. But the cool thing about this motor is it's able to withstand max power, max peak power for 15 minutes. Right, this is where my voice goes from bass to something altogether more real. I tell you what, I would like to get some motors we've tested recently into that lab to get some data. 
Well, we're at yet another incredible test room here at the Fang. Uh, this is the EMC room, which means electromagnetic compatibility. Uh, my understanding of it, it measures the cleanliness, the magnetic cleanliness of an e-bike system. Uh, there's two levels to this, isn't there? There's a small scale level, which you test, which is the e-bike mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. What's involved with that exactly? Uh, we can say that first the e-bike will not be impacted by the other uh, electrical components like uh, the other vehicles and also the other vehicle will not impact the e-bike during the riding. So that's the big picture story. I mean, mm. you told me the story about the train station in Paris, <laughs> didn't you? Yes. What's that story? Uh, the story that is once we tested the, the, the pre-tested bike and during the, the train station, one uh, train goes very fast, right? And then the number jumped to 99 km per hour, <laughs> suddenly. So this is something you need to be avoided. Yeah. yeah. And what about the small scale? What about within the bike itself? What, what are mm. you measuring within the bike? Uh, the measure in the bike actually is an electrical component. They need to be, uh, how to say, to against the impact by the other electro parts. Are we talking about the remote, the battery, the motor and the display, right? Yes, you are right, the whole system. Wow, I didn't quite expect this much that goes into e-bike system R&D. Now, e-biking can actually be an immensely pleasurable experience until something goes wrong. Now we all want dependable motors, we want dependable e-bike systems. We want essentially a trouble-free experience, which brings us to the waterproof room. Lots of fun and games in here. Now, lots of testing, IPC testing. We've got five and six, which is essentially like a fireman's test. Loads of fun, not so much fun for the motor. Uh, IPX7 testing, which is where the motor gets submerged in the water up to a metre for 30 minutes. So what we're looking at here is such things as leaks from the seals, from the bearings, or any other part of the motor. The fan go one stage further. They get their own pressurised system where they can detect any leaks in that motor uh, at a far shorter space of time. So you can see this hub drive here. You can see there's leaks coming out uh, from the seal area. So can I you know, sped, speeding up the process massively. Which brings us on to this little beauty. This is the dirty water test. Now, essentially, the water in here is kind of the water you find in a Welsh or Scottish bog after cows or sheep have been hanging around in it for weeks on end. So what this machine does is they have a motor running and they submerge it in that water for five seconds at a time over 1,500 cycles. So that might actually surprise many of you to see just how waterproof an e-bike motor is, or should I say, how waterproof a Bafang motor is. Good fun, eh? Uh, on a serious note, I mean, Bafang are always working on product lifespan, design, and construction techniques. Uh, in here a second. Can't be a good old button pressing machine. 10,000 cycles underwater and 40,000 cycles above water for the remote and the display. It's just a number, right? Put that into real world terms. So that means you can switch your bike on and off 25,000 times. This is what it tests. Give that a, a yearly lifespan, that's 68 years worth of turning your bike on and off. So like I've said to you many times before, I think many people molly coddle their e-bikes a bit too much. It really is an exceptional climb for e-bikes. Environmental reliability, yeah. Oh, here we go. UV test area. I'm thinking this is gonna be the room where they cook and freeze motors. Although I'm thinking in a climate where there's typhoons and I think we're in 35 degree heat at the moment, you probably don't need to, minus 20. Definitely not that temperature out here. Uh, you've got a man working on some motors there. 10 degrees, 
and then we've got another one over there, 24 degrees. So a huge range of temperatures for motors which are going to be subject to environmental conditions worldwide. Okay, motors in cages. Is this a motor sanctuary? No, I doubt that this is a motor torture chamber. It's actually a motor aging room. Yeah, no jokes. I get it, it's been a long flight. Okay, what we got? We got a crank testing machine. We've got a crooked wheel jig here, which tests the reliability of a motor on a maybe a buckled wheel or a wonky surface. Now, this is where they test the reliability, the longevity of a motor. So, put that in real world numbers. If you ride your bike for 10 kilometers each day, these guys are capable of subjecting a motor to 13 years, yet yeah, 13 years worth of use. So, when you consider that most e bike motors have got warranty for two years, that's pretty thorough testing. motor performance test area. This is the one I've been waiting for. Now, not only do Bafang uh, test new products, they make changes to existing products to continually improve their motors. So what have we got in this room? Well, we've got loads of machines doing this, that, and the other, but it's this machine here, the dynameter. I mean, who wouldn't want a motor dynameter? This is where Bafang they go really in depth into the personality, the characteristics of each of their motors. We're looking at torque curves, we're looking at peak power, we're looking at you know the way a motor overruns and it interacts with the terrain with the rider on it. Just to give you some numbers here, now we've actually got the M510 and the six and, and the M560 as comparisons. So the M510, now they state that this motor is 95 newton meters, but this machine can actually push that motor up to 190 newton meters, the peak power of just over 500 watts. The 560, on the other hand, that motor, which we've been using up in the hills on Taiping Mountain, uh, which is a proper mountain climbing machine. Now get this, right? In the 500 watt version, 139.1 capability, they stayed 130, with a 758 watt uh, peak power. The 750 watt version is, they state 140 newton meters, but it can be pushed to 152 with a peak power of 1,046 watts. And finally, the mule on the rolling road. This is where they beat the living daylights out of an e-bike system. So we're looking at uphill, downhill, start, stop, underload, vibrations, you name it the bike gets put through the mill on this machine. The Fang batteries are a key part of their e-bike systems and their new energy lab is where they look at such things as the charging and discharging performance of lithium cells by simulating various scenarios. The Fang batteries are lightweight, fast charging and long life to give the highest level of efficiency. It is also important to be aware that not only do Bufang go to extreme lengths to test e-bike system parts inside under controlled conditions, they also test them out in the hills too. I can't believe I'm riding single track on the side of a city of 10 million people. Well, that was truly eye-opening, a very fascinating experience here at Bafang. But more than anything, I think what a calm and welcoming team of people Bafang have. Okay, so that's part one done. In part two of our visit to China, we are out on some incredible trails on the fringes of Suzhou City in 80% humidity and yellow weather warning before returning back here and having a look at the production line. Please join us then.